श्री कृष्णा श्री कृष्णा श्री कृष्णा श्री कृष्णा गुरुर्ब्रह्मा गुरुर्विष्णु गुरुर्देव महेश्वर गुरुर्साक्षात परम ब्रह्म तस्म श्री गुरव नम तस्म श्री गुरव नम दीज सेवन स्टेप्स थ्रू विच एवरी सीकर हेज टू गो after having understood them theoretically we have to apply and practice them in our day to day life and spiritual life is practice not only during the waking but also during the dream and the deep sleep and the quality of our life during the waking determines the quality of the dreams and the quality of the deep sleep if a person has lived the waking life pure non deceptive and sincere without ill intentions such a person will never have disturbing dreams and also such a person will have very good sleep there are two qualities are two things in the life of a person which tells what kind of life we are living there was a jeweler and uh, he became old this happened in thane he became old so his two sons took over the business and then uh, they asked their father he hey, dad we will follow whatever you tell as our business policy and uh, he said you have seen me throughout my life i had two things you try to get those two things you are on the right track what are the two things number one he said i never had a digestion problem i always had normal hunger i used to take food regularly content and limited quantity never had any problem second thing i never had a problem of sleep the moment i used to land on the bed i would go to sleep so a person who has good hunger and good sleep he has lived his day perfectly how subtle it is if we have been agitating frustrating cheating others breaking the trust and trying to be goody goody all these things may deceive the world but you can't deceive yourself but this is what we do most we deceive ourselves the most and therefore our mind becomes a kind of rebellion therefore the seven steps we have to practice waking dream and deep sleep so how do we practice the seven step the first three steps we were told that first is uh, satsanga and study of scriptures the second step is the uh, vicharana dhyasya when we have studied something let's try to understand it in such a manner that no doubt is left knowledge with the doubt is ignorance ignorance means not absence of knowledge but incomplete ness in knowledge so first we study the scriptures etc as a regular part of our day to day life i'll tell you one event about one gentleman he is now must be more than 50 55 or so and he had a very big business but he was a lone ranger he will be having hardly any friends and doing his business very well and uh, extremely angry and very much disturbed all the time so his wife his mother children persons in the office everybody was frustrated not only that he himself was frustrated he could hold himself out of that anger and somehow he happened to listen to bhaja govinda and in that i had mentioned about 
ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ಭಗವದ್ಗೀತಾ ಕಿಂಚಿತ ನೀತಾ ಗಂಗಾ ಜಲ ನವ ಕಣಿಗಾ ಪೀತಾ ಸಕೃತ ಬೀಜೇನ ಮುರಾರಿ ಸಮರ್ಚ ಕ್ರಿಯತೆ ತಸ್ ಯಮೇನ ಚರ್ಚ ದಿಸ್ ವರ್ಸ್ ವೇನ್ ಐ ಸ್ಪೋಕ್ ಸಮ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಐ ಡೋಂಟ್ ರಿಮೆಂಬರ್ ವೆನ್ ಯು ಹರ್ಡ್ ಇಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೇರ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಮೆನ್ಷನ್ ಹೌ ಟು ಸ್ಟಡಿ ಸ್ಕ್ರಿಪ್ಚರ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ಹೌ ಟು ಸ್ಟಡಿ ಭಗವದ್ಗೀತಾ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಡೇ ರೀಡ್ ಒನ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಸಂಸ್ಕೃತ ಒನ್ ಟು ತ್ರೀ ಗೋ ಅಪ್ ಟು ಏಟೀನ್ ದೆನ್ ಅಗೇನ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಚಾಂಡ್ ವಿದ್ ಯು ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಯು ಡೋಂಟ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಚಾಂಡ್ ಯು ನೋ ಸಂಸ್ಕೃತ ಲ್ಯಾಂಗ್ವೇಜ್ ಇಸ್ ಸಚ್ ದೆನ್ ವಿನ್ ಯು ಚಾಂಡ್ ಇಟ್ ಟು ತ್ರೀ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪನ್ ಒನ್ ಈಸ್ ಯುವರ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡಿಂಗ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪನಿಂಗ್ you don't have to know it will happen this is the beauty of sanskrit language particularly bhagavad gita another example i'll tell you about this our scriptures are not written by tom dick and harry for the selfish purpose this happened in ahmedabad recently maybe about 3 4 years before i was invited to somebody's house their family i am very much known then my friend told me how many my sister in law wants to talk to you something i said okay call her he said she came as is it mama i said not on the floor i don't like sit next to me she said he said i'm talking she started to cry and she could not hold crying 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 then her brother in law told uh baby you sit down i'll explain to sam and then he told her, our son is in class 10 he cannot talk and he is not bright so she is so frustrated other children in the family are very good but he is like that what to do i said so it's simple call him he came i told him give you uh, this uh, bhagavad gita along with the vishnu sahasram i said hey chant after me vishnu sahasram okay they every word i say you repeat then i started om vishnave namaha om chatkaraya namaha and he started chanting slowly i said don't worry you are doing very well so i chanted about a dozen or two i said now you have to chant every day vishnu sahasra naam which or way you can but you chant he started his self confidence has come back he became very bright and earlier he was afraid and shy in fact he complex even to talk to the children of his age group after a year or two i was going for my lecture he came on his motorcycle stopped the motorcycle i couldn't believe he said hi swami ji that boy who was so shy could not talk to his own friends to me he said hi swami ji I was so happy to see that. So my friend asked me, what actually happened? I said, I had done nothing. Don't blame me. This is the beauty of Bhagavad Gita or Vishnu Sahasrama. Chant every day. The similar story comes in the story of um, Shirdi Sai Baba. There also he told one, one of his devotees, Chant Vishnu Sahasrama. It is not ordinary. because the beauty of the sanskrit language it will clean up all your mess in the mind mind becomes calm and quiet therefore every day one chapter of gita chant again and again don't chant the same chapter you will become mechanical every day new chapter then after take whatever commentary and the commentary i can suggest you is the commentary on gita written by ramsukda ji maharaj from gita press read one verse and then try to understand whatever you can then close the book then write in your own hand the sanskrit shloka dhrutra ashtra vacha dhru dhru is like this or like this start from write with in sanskrit don't write in any language after that you do then whatever you have understood write in your own language konkani marathi 
French, whatever language. Like that, continue it for all the 700 verses. It will take at least two years. That boy whom I am telling, he did it. And thereafter, he um, phoned me once. And I didn't know anything about him. Never seen him. So he called once. Swamiji, I am so and so, I want to come and meet you. I said, come, come now. I am in such and such place for my lecture. Come for the lecture and meet me. He said, no, I cannot come. I said, then don't come. He said, I want to come, but now I am in Bangalore. You are in Mumbai. How can I come now? Then, I will take tomorrow's flight and come. I said, is it that urgent? He said, yes. So then come. He came next day morning. And he told me his story. This, whatever you are told, I have done it for three years. And I can see the change in me, my family, my staff. Everything has completely changed. Dear friends, one has to work sincerely, systematically. So, first, Shastra, study of Gita, etc. Sadhu Sangati, always be in the company of those who will not take you away from your goal of spiritual evolution. We get involved in the unwanted people in this world. Never try to help anybody who is going to destroy you. Oh, simple. There is nothing like helping somebody at the cost of your own family, of your own life, your own spiritual evolution. No. That is not. It is attachment. It is going the wrong way. Therefore, this is the Shastra and Sadhu Sangati, this we have to do during our day-to-day -day living, one part. Then the second part comes, the uh, <coughs> Vicharana Jiti Asya. The Vicharana, whatever we have studied, understood, then sit quiet after that is over and start working on one principle. From this shlok, I have heard this, I have learned this. Now, how am I going to practice this knowledge in my day-to-day -day life? Work on it. And in this manner, slowly, you will yourself discover how to apply the knowledge in life. Like, you know, from the laboratory to the field, lab to land, you know, there was one program of Government of India. Lab to land. Whatever we have discovered in the laboratory, then you have to apply on the land, in your day-to-day -day field. In the same manner, whatever we have understood, doing our study of scriptures or sitting with the Lord, after that, that principle, how do I apply in my life? If we will not apply that, it will be only kind of omission. That knowledge which is digested and assimilated changes our life. That knowledge which is not assimilated and digested, but it comes out, it is like a vomition. Whatever you don't digest and assimilate, it comes out the wrong way. See, friends, and such people, they become erudite scholars, but as regards their own life is concerned, it is most disgusting life. Friends. Therefore, as much we deceive ourselves, we deceive nobody in this world. We deceive ourselves the most. And therefore, this is Vicharana. How do we practice this knowledge in our day-to-day -day life? And then the third one is Trutiya Asanga Bhavana. Anything or anybody who attracts our mind beyond limits, we must protect ourselves from ourselves. See, there was one uh, air hostess, British Airways. I don't know where is she now. Because I have been always travelling that airline. So, we came to one. So I was in Mumbai that time. So, she came and told Swamiji, my marriage is such a day, please come. 
So look here. Uh, I won't be able to come because I will not be available that time. However, when you get married, you come with me. I'll definitely meet both of you. They came. That time there was one Rudraksha in my hand. He said, Swamiji, please bless us. So I took the Rudraksha, <coughs> threw it, and I told the husband, hey, to tie her around her neck, be tied. Then I told, now I am blessing. What is blessing? Protect yourself from yourself. Yes, Swamiji, what kind of blessing is this? This is the most important blessing. You are in a field wherein there is every likelihood air hostage job is not simple. So many temptations, so many um, attractions, such a glamorous life. And that time you will destroy yourself if you don't protect yourself from yourself. See, friends, we have to live in this world, no doubt. But while living in this world, we must protect ourselves from ourselves. Therefore, when here it is said, uh, Asanga Bhavana, so what is attachment? How do we know? How do I know that I am attached to um, Puna, Puran? How do I know? Attachment is the higher the frequency of thoughts going towards an object, more is the attachment. The higher the intensity of thinking towards anything or being, that is attachment. And that attachment is unhealthy condition of the mind because it is painful. Wherever there is a pain, we are not comfortable. In the same manner, when we are attached to somebody, if that somebody is not nearby around, then we suffer. And this attachment we have created by giving undue importance. See friends, protect yourself from yourself. These are the first three stages on the path of evolution according to Yoga Vashishta. Therefore, the, um, the teacher says, Avapurva avastha trayam tu atra jagrat itteva samstitam. So the first three, study of scriptures, then sadhu sangati, vicharana and asangata. Never get involved too much with anything or anybody beyond requirement. Be friendly to everyone. Don't get lost in a friend then the quality of life changes. See? Now, the third. Chaturti sapna ityukta sapna bham yatra vai jagat. Now, the fourth stage is the um, vilapini chaturti sar vasana vilayatmika. The fourth stage is that where our disturbed mind is quietened to a great extent and none of the memories disturb us. We are living in the present, in the waking, but the present is destroyed by getting lost in the memories of the past. So whenever we are living in the memory, we are living a dream life. See, I was there, I did this thing, then she came and helped me, and he did like this thing, and then it happened. Now you are living in a dream. And the same dream, when it becomes too intense, it is seen actually a dream. In the dream, the same thing is again repeated. See, friends, there is no difference between the waking and the dream experience, except in the waking experience, the object or the person is required to go through the experience. In the dream, the object or the person is not required to go through the same experience. See, if there is a tiger coming in front of us in the waking, we are afraid. In the dream, also the tiger comes without the presence of the tiger. And we also get afraid. 
Therefore, the experiences of waking and dream are the same. Only difference, you require object in the waking, you don't require. How we don't require? Because now our mind is so obsessed with that particular thing that mind can create an illusory object to enjoy in the dream. And therefore, here the next step, the fourth step was that Vilapani Chaturthisya. So we have to erase all those impressions or the thoughts in the mind before we go to sleep. So that the dreams will not bother us. Then what is to be done? So before we go to sleep, we must chant the Lord's name till you go to sleep. No other thought. And unless the sleep is there, don't go to the bed. Many times what happens? There is no sleep. And yet we go to bed and lie down. And then the mind starts playing food. And all imagination, it goes on multiplying. And it never ends. Therefore, keep yourself actively busy in something or the other. And when you are feeling sleepy, then don't delay. Immediately go to sleep. But while you going to sleep, chant the Lord's name. Then the thoughts which are accumulated unwantedly in the mind, they will be erased. Pilapini, Chaturthisya. Then, Shuddha Samvid, Shuddha Sanvid Maya Nanda Rupa Bhavati Panchami, Ardha Sukta Prabhuddhamo Jivan Mukta Krishnati. Then the next step is that Anandaika Ghani Bhava Sushuktakya Panchami. Now, Chaturthi is over, Sapna. Then, Anandaika Ghani Bhava Sushuktakya Panchami. Then, the fifth stage of evolution is the stage of deep sleep. Now, what is the deep sleep? Deep sleep, we have absence of everything. Be attentive. Absence is not an object. Absence of what? See? So, what is our experience in the waking and the dream? Everything is present. And in deep sleep, there is neither waking nor dream. So, absence of the waking and the absence of the dream is the deep sleep. So, in the deep sleep, our experience is I know nothing because there is nothing to know. But I am still there. And therefore we told you so many times make absence as an object of experience. So what should be the object? There are only two objects which can help us directly. One is the sound, second is the form. Nama Rupatpak Jagat. The world is nothing but name and the form. So make the absence of the sound as the object of experience. Be very attentive. When we make absence of the sound as an object of experience, you will start hearing those minute sounds. which we normally don't hear. See? Why this is happening? We are still sitting in the ears. If you have to listen to silence, what you have to do? Drop the ears and go beyond the ears. Beyond the ears is mind. Then how to do that? You can close the eyes, you can't close the ears. There's only one way. Remain indifferent to every sound. When you remain indifferent to every sound, you go beyond the ears. You 
come to the mind. The net result will be our mind's habit of reacting, interacting positively or negatively to every perception that habit will be stopped. Our mind is habitual about everything, about every being. We have a comment. We have to say something. So we hear the sounds. We say, produce the sound. Mind expresses as only the words. I have not read Bible, but I have heard from somewhere. It is said there that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with the Lord, and the Word was the manifest. What is that word? This is the word, mind. Mind unmanifest is Paravani. Mind ready to manifest is Pashanti Vani. Mind manifested subtle way is the Madhyama Vani. Mind manifested grossly is the Vaikari Vani. So when we thus start understanding, listen to the silence, slowly you drop the ears. And when you don't hear anything as in deep sleep, your mind won't react. See friends. And when we don't react, we are at peace. But when we react, we are disturbed. So this is the waking sleep. Although we are awake to everything, and what is everything? Only two things, names and forms. A person looks at a girl, form, and then the mind starts interacting. Oh, she is there, so is there. And thereafter, the mind becomes so victimized by its own fancy. Therefore, there are two aspects of the mind we have to understand. One aspect is perception. Only the mind is behind every experience. Experience cannot happen. So I see a girl, perception. If I stop there, no problem. But thereafter, the mind starts projecting. She is good, she is nice. Why she is here? When I am here, it must be, if he is a spiritual person going to satsang, it must be God's will. I am not doing on my own. I have to go and help her. I have to, this is all cheating ourselves. See, friends, get out of this catch. Then we very much live in the world. But the world is no more of any consequences to us. Like in the deep sleep, we are sleeping. Before sleeping, all requirements are there. After we sleep, whether you are sleeping on a good bed or a bad bed, whether it is hot or cold, it makes no difference. In the same manner, Panchami Avastha Yoga Bhumika is this. That we seize to react to anything in this world. See? And for this, I'll tell you an example. You must have seen there was a school and small kids, maybe primary one or so, boys and girls sitting. And at that age, they will be fighting with each other, shouting, teasing, going on. And one of the students said, Hey, Miss is coming. Everybody quiet. So whether Miss comes or not, everybody is quiet. Now exactly what happened? The children became aware of someone whom they respect, revere and are also afraid. They became quiet. So be very, very attentive. Know for certain 
in yesterday evening talk I mentioned this point. Dvaha suparna sanjya sakaya samanam ruksham parishashva jate tayo anyaha pippalam sadhubhati anashnan anyaha vichakashi. There are two birds sitting on the branch of the tree. The tree is our body and the branch is our heart. Two of them. One is Paramatma, God, and second is we, the body. Paramatma helps us in seeing the world. The body starts projecting on the world. This is good, that is good. This is bad, that is bad. This is not Paramatma telling good or bad. He is only eliminating. Abhicha Kashiti. He is only eliminating. Now be attentive. If we remain aware of this, that the Lord in my heart, He knows every action before I do it. He hears every word before I speak it. And He knows every thought before that thought erupts. Simply remain aware of this. The Lord is in my heart. He knows. Like the children, the moment they even imagine, they are not known, they are imagined only that the teacher has come. In the same manner, start imagining. Somebody is watching you. There is one CCTV company in Bombay. They have got a big holding. And the holding is Upar Wala Degra. CCTV. The God is observing you. Upar Wala Degra. See, friends. Then we are practicing the fifth stage Yoga Bhumi. Only we have to remain aware of this. One person asked this question, Swamiji, how to decide the things in life? I said, I'll tell you, but don't ask question further, no argument, no logic. Okay. As I said before the Lord, and chant this mantra. This mantra is from Bhagavad Gita, second chapter, seventh mantra. Karpanya dosho pata swamavaha, prachami twam dharma samuda jeta, yasre yasad mischitam ruhitan me, shishas deham shadivam twam prapanam. O Lord, I am extremely confused. I am having self pity. I feel I am incomplete. And therefore, apata swamavaha, therefore, my original glorious existence is corrupted. Now I am confused as to what is my real role in life today. Arjuna was on the battlefield as a warrior, but he was confused whether he is a grandson to Vishmacharya or is a disciple to Dronacharya. Therefore, Dharma Samuda Cheta, I am completely confused whether I am a husband or a father or a mother or a wife or a sister that I am confused. Dharma Samudha Jita. Yes, 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 Nishitam Ruhi Dhanme. Oh Lord, kindly tell me what is perfectly right for my evolution. Shreyas means not living because we are not dying. But every moment of our life, we have to evolve spiritually. Yes, 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 Nishitam Ruhi Dhanme. You shall tell me and I shall follow it in later in spirit. With this mantra, you chant half a dozen times and then put your issue, your problem in front of the Lord. The first thought that will come in your heart is God's message. See friends, then the Panchami Bhumika will start manifesting in our life. And we will not be a problem to ourselves. Therefore, Anandaika Ghani Bhava Sushupta Panchami 
and he who is ananda gana means what he is not happy because of this or because of that he is happy in spite of everything and then happiness is not pleasure be very attentive pleasure requires some kind of support anamban but happiness doesn't require any support any other support less happiness is bliss pleasures are blisters see friends therefore this is ananda ek ghari bhava susupta kat panchami then asamvedana rupat shashti turya padavida and the sixth stage is asamvedana rupat asamvedana rupat means that you are living very much in this world but the world has lost its capacity to tempt you to disturb you to influence you you live very much in this world भगवान रामकृष्ण परमंश जी शुटे ने स्टोरी दो कट द जैक फ्रूट दो डन दैट दे विल नो हैंड्स बिकम वेरी स्टिकी स्टिकी बिकॉज ऑफ द ऑयली सब्सटेंस विच कम्स आउट सो ही इज टू से वेन यू हैव टू कट द जैक फ्रूट अप्लाय ऑइल एंड विद द ऑयली हैंड्स वेन यू कट युअर हैंड्स विल नॉट बी सॉइड इन द सेम मैनर वेन वी आर living in this world apply the oil of the divine remembrance upar wala dekh raha hai see somebody is always observing us we are never alone remember this verse there was a first sanskrit movie you all must have seen Adi Shankar Acharya. That movie was in Sanskrit. Very beautiful movie. And for the inauguration of that movie, uh, it happened in Mumbai. I went there to see it. I was called up there. And there is somebody sitting next to me. And there were two characters in that movie. Who young boys, maybe ten, twelve years or ten, five, ten years. Two of them. And they always used to walk with Shankar Acharya. at the child every day so the person who was sitting next to me he asked me in the break swami ji i have studied shankar acharya's life but these two characters what they are showing no where it is there who are they i am getting confused i say is a very simple man they are two characters one is death and second is wisdom bhagwan shankar acharya always moved with these two friends remember we are not permanent resident of this world and second thing live your life in the light of wisdom these were the two things which were always with bhagwan shankar acharya see friends therefore this shashti bhumika is असंवेदन रूपात षष्टि तुर्य पदा विदा सो दी तुर्यावस्था इज दिस लाइक वी सपोर्ट तुर्यावस्था विल बी आई एम सपोर्टिंग द सन द हजब एंड द फादर आई एम द फोर्थ बट वॉट एक्चुअली इज मेड आई एम द ओनली रियालिटी अदर थिंग्स ओनली अपियर बिकॉज ऑफ द रूपांत एंड सो लॉन्ग आई टू प्ले माई रोल आई प्ले माई रोल सिंसियरली सो वेन आई एम विथ माई सन i must present himself as an ideal father when i am with my father i must present himself as an ideal son if i am with my wife i must present myself as an ideal husband then you are done with see friends and when we do this we perfectly sincerely the net result will be we will be at peace and this is called as spiritual practice sixth stage of the yoga omika and ultimately the seventh is turya atita padavastha saptami bhumika uttama and last is turya atita padavastha when 
one has gone even beyond this relative and the absolute world. Means what? Be attentive. When I am talking to you that I as a man, Turiya, and the son, husband, and the father is the relative. So I am the fourth one. So I am still holding on to the father, to the wife, and to the son. So still holding on to. But now I have to go beyond it. How do I, how do I go beyond? When there is no father, how can I be the son? When there is no wife, can I be the husband? When there is no son, can I be the father? And when they disappear, nothing happens to me. But if I am not there, they are no existence. Therefore, from the absolute point of view, relative world has no existence. And this relative world, which has no existence, means what? Means two things. Number one, Brahma Satyam Jagan Mithya Jeevo Brahmaiva Napraha Bhagavan Shankaracharya writes Shloka Dhena Pravakshami Yaduktam Granta Koti Bhi Brahma Satyam Jagan Mithya Jeevo Brahmaiva Napraha I shall tell you in a half shloka what is said in millions of books and what is said Brahma Satyam Jagan Mithya The Brahman is the reality the world is an illusion now be attentive. What is the meaning of the statement illusion? Go to the effect of the illusion. Like the, um, the rainbow is an illusion. We know that. So when we see the rainbow, what is our interaction? Do we suffer? We enjoy. So the other day, I was somewhere in uh, what you call in Australia and uh, somewhere the town south and um, there was very beautiful rainbow so I told my I said hey look at the rainbow how beautiful it is see he said Swami is not the only one there are two more above that oh, really three rainbows in a row wow when you see the rainbow you enjoy but do you desire let me cut a piece of a rainbow and give it to my wife. Be famous. There is one story in the life of um, Nanak Devji Maharaj, Guru Nanak Dev. Once one uh, lady brought her daughter and herself to this Mahatma did Namaskar. And this Mahatma was looking at the girl with the steady eyes as if in trance. So the mother said to this great master, Sir, you are looking at this girl so intensely. I thought you are a Mahatma. You are looking at a girl like this. He said, I am not looking at her. I am looking at him. He who could conceive such a beauty, how much more beautiful he must be. Exactly the same story happens if you read the Sai Satcharitra. One of his old devotees, <coughs> he was doing his seva. And that time, one uh, Muslim mother and daughter, they come to do namaskar to this same, Sai Baba. So when they came, both of them, they undone their um, uh, this covering on the face and the girl was very young and very beautiful. So this old devotee who was doing Seva, he could not uh, arrest his mind. Again and again can looking at No, I should not see. How can I see? But the mind will not stop. And the master immediately understood. And he said, the eyes are doing their job. You don't get influence. Seeing the world is not a problem. 
but getting lost in this world. And in this manner, from the absolute standpoint, we come to know the relativity has no existence whatsoever. From the man's point of view, there is no existence for the son, for the husband, for the father. Because when they were not there, still the man was. And when all of them disappear, the man continues. From the spaces point of view, north, east, west, south, four corners and up and down, these tail directions have no existence. These are the seven stages through which a seeker has to go consciously. Therefore, Turyati Tapadavasta Saptami Bhumika Uttama Mano Vacho Bhi Agrahya Sap Prakasha Padatmika. And it cannot be comprehended by the speech, by the mind, or by the intellect. It is not a concept to be known through intellect, it is not a feeling to be experienced through the mind. It, is cannot, it cannot be described in words. It can be an experience by itself. Now imagine with this knowledge, Bhagwan Ram faced his own life. When he was told that you will be coronated, he did not jump out of the skin. And next moment he was told, sorry, you have to go to the forest. He did not suffer. Because he knew Brahma Satyam Jagan Mithya. All that we have has no existence whatsoever. Therefore, Pratyahuti Vashat Anta Chetya Chetana Vibhavitam Mukta Eva Iti Asandehu Mahasavataya Sriti Daya. Therefore, when Pratyahuti Vashat uh, Shir, the consciousness, he is consciousness when it is completely withdrawn from the objectivity. See, what is the meaning of withdrawn from the objectivity? Take an example of a mirror. We see a book and we see a mirror. What is the difference? We look at the book. We don't look at the mirror. We look in the mirror. First. Second thing. We don't look at the reflection. But we see the reflection and we look at ourselves. So when we take the toothbrush and toothpaste and stand in front of the mirror and show our teeth, that time we don't take the toothpaste and apply the Exactly this is what is meant here. That we live very much in this world. No problem. But our attention is on ourselves. So when attention is on ourselves, whatever we are seeing, like if the mirror is dusty, reflection will not be clear. That doesn't mean we have to wipe our face. Three times. If the mirror which is dusty, if the mirror is shaky, Therefore, the reflection also looks here and there, we can't focus properly. That doesn't mean we are shaking. See, friends, if the mirror is broken, one face appears many. That doesn't mean we have become many. In the same manner, when we are functioning in this world, but not losing our absolute being, this is what is meant here. That pratya ruti vashat antaha, where the mind is totally withdrawn, although experiencing the objectivity, chetyam na vivavitam chet. Then there is chetyam, the objective world is completely gone. And that experience where there is no objectivity, objectless awareness is our essential nature. Now, how objectless awareness? Many times it happens. Something is in our hand and we are touching everywhere and we are suffering. 
ultimately we hit our head. I don't know where did I keep. I, oh, it is in my hand. But did we get it back? It was never lost. In the same manner, we don't have to gain divinity. We are. And as we start rising from the lower level of existence to the higher level of existence, everything becomes redundant. See, we are all flown by air. The moment your flight takes, slowly look down. The differences which were so conspicuous, they start becoming less conspicuous. Ultimately, they become redundant. This is how the whole life changes and therefore mukta eva iti asandeho maha samataya daya and then such a master has attained liberation from the relative existence although he is living in the relative world. And therefore yad bhoga sukadukkham shahi apara mushta purnadihi Atma Ramo Narati state that Mukta Pamuda Rutam. So yet, Boga Sukha, Dukham Shahi, Aparamushta, Purnadihi. Purnadihi, the one who is understanding his experience is complete, he is untouched by the joys and the sorrows. Aparamushta, Sukha Dukham Shahi. Aparamushta, untouched by. Meaning, he has not become dumb, he has not become dead. He will experience the joy, he will experience the miseries, but he will not become a joyful, pleasurable person or he will not become a miserable person because of the miseries. Otherwise, spiritual evolution will be becoming like a stone or what? No, you don't become stone. But normally people get attracted towards that. You go to Himalaya, etc., there you come across many Mahatmas, great Mahatmas, because they are staying there for years together, cold doesn't make any difference to them. And when we people all the time living in a very protected environment, when we go there, we see <coughs> that these Mahatmas, oh God, in such a terrible cold, no stay master. Now the same masters, in the month of December, when they come to Haridwar, they require ice slabs to sleep upon. Now tell me, if the eyes are open and you cannot see, is it a healthy condition or unhealthy condition? If the skin is normal and you are not able to feel that cold, is it normal or abnormal? Therefore, these things should not be the criteria for spiritual evolution. And therefore, yet bhoga sukha dukkham shayi aparamrita purnadihi atma ramo naratishthet. Then such a person is reveling in his own being, atma ramo. Atma ramo means the one who is reveling in his own being. He is free from the virus of desires. Virus of expectations, virus of past memories, virus of comparisons, virus of logic, everything. He is at peace with this. God has given human being an instrument. It is both sided knife. Whichever you use it, it will cut. That instrument is our intellect. Intellect can justify Anything in this world. Anything. In one's own favor. Just for the sake of understanding, imagine. Rajiv Gandhi and that lady who blew herself to kill Rajiv Gandhi. Let us imagine. They came in front of you. And you ask. This event that has happened, is it right or wrong? Rajiv Gandhi will say, it was totally wrong. That lady should be punished, she killed me. Ask that lady, now you tell. She'll say, I have done the right thing. Human beings, intellect is such a detrimental institute, 
instrument, unless it is properly trained, it will become self-destructive. Bhagavad Gita brings this point in the 18th chapter. Adharmam dharmaitiya mannate tamasa vruta sarvarthan viparitascha buddhisa partha tamasi. Buddhi means intellect. See, adharmam dharmaiti mannate. What is wrong is proved to be right. I am not the only one who is doing corruption. Everybody does. See, this I learned from a police in Delhi. I told my friend to go uh, through the red light. Never mind. I said, you are in Delhi, man. Afraid of red light? So she got inspired and anyway. Police talk. Then I said, um, you please take money from me, not from her, because of, no, 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 go and take from her. Madam, um, without receipt, 200 rupees. With receipt, 500 rupees. So I smiled. He said, what is there to smile? The prime, that time, uh, Narsimha Rao was the prime minister. The country of whose prime minister is corrupt, if I take this word, is wrong. Adharmam, dharma iti bandhati. What is wrong is proved to be right. See, friends, to protect ourselves from this wrong usage of the intellect, our scriptures are given as Dharma Shastra. Tasma Shastram Pramanam Te Karya Karyu Vyavasthita. What is right and what is wrong, we have no right to decide. The scriptures decide. If you are a Brahmachari, Grastha, Vanaprastha, Sanyasi, these are the rules under which you have to perform. You go to USA and say, I am from India, I will drive from the left side, there is a get back to India. If you are in USA, you have to drive according to our rules in the same manner. If you are leading a decent cultured life, you have to follow the rules and regulations of a cultured society. So, in the, we have seen in UK and many Western countries, European countries, there are zones, naked people's zone. And there are all the gents and ladies, they are moving naked. Then you go there, not allowed in India. See, friends, this is how our intellect is detrimental This is a good idea of suggesting me. Swamiji, please keep quiet. <laughs> this is probably a signal for me. In this manner, when we thus practice this, that pratyahruta uh, vashat anta chetyam chetna vivavitam mukta eva iti asandeho maha samataya taya. And then, yet bhoga sukha dukkha shehi apparamushta. So what is the liberation? This is liberation. You are at peace with yourself. A drunkard can always justify how drinking is right. A corrupt person always can justify how corruption is right. But then he or she is deceiving himself, not anybody else. He friends. And therefore, Ikyutva Daya Praha Manu Praha. So after this liberation was indicated, thereafter again, out of um, very compassion and love for um, Ikshwaku, Manu Bhagwan again said, what is the meaning of attainment of the realization? merging in the absolute. What is the meaning of that? Now this is the concluding topic which we'll try to understand in our tomorrow's concluding session. Vivahari upashanto va gurasto athavayati asharyo sasharyo va bhavati evamati bhavan Amitya Vihirascha Shuddho Shuddho Ajara Maraha Chanta Samasama Vasa Iti Matvana Shoshati 
power to do it for you. The more you contemplate on this, it is so simple, it is so beautiful. Can you continue another 10 15 minutes? The students' time will come now. Okay. Here, now, attainment of this is indicated. Vivahari upashantova grustova yatava api yati. Whether he is engaged in the worldly things or he is quiet, whether he is a married grasta or he was he is a great yati, a sannyasi, so shariro o shariro with the body or without the body, bhoti evam mati puman. When you, you as understand this, is what we understood in the last verse, aham ityabhi vihinascha shuddho paddho buddho ajara mara amara. So he who has thus totally erased the I. Aham vihi nascha. No notion of I, I, I. Do you know more argumentative, more miserable is the sign of strong ego. Argumentative doesn't mean very big things, even in day-to-day things or small little thing, we insist, we argue. That is a strong ego. And when their insistence or argument is not accepted, they get hurt. That is also ego. Therefore, more, the uh, rather stronger the ego, easily we get hurt. Lesser the ego, we don't get hurt. See, I'll tell you an example. I was in uh, our uh, Amrita Randavi Maha's ashram. And in their ashram, there are thousands of people. Many Westerners and many Indians. So, in my talk here, see, I make the things a uh, little lighter so that your tension goes down in understanding. So, common example is about husband and wife. Nobody has ever condemned the woman as a mother. Nobody has condemned the woman as a sister. People make fun only the husband and wife because that is the relation wherein fun can happen. And after my talk was over, there was one lady from maybe some European country. She came. Swamiji, I have got objection in your talk. I said, I am sorry. Do you know what? I said, I don't know, but your objection I accept. No, you are always making fun of ladies. Without ladies, are you born? I said, I don't know. No, you should not make I said, I am sorry. Then, the Swamis who were there, they came to my room. Swami, you are extremely sorry. Why, 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 why? You are feeling sorry. No, that lady, she came and spoke to you like this thing. She is a big problem for everybody in the whole ashram. She is fighting with everybody. In the cooks, in the cleaning, anywhere she goes, she is going to fight. Now she has not spared you. I said, then she is like Bhagavan. Samoham Sarva Bhuteshu. She is like God. She is common for everybody. She fights with everybody. Therefore, his ego is this. Ego is not only a stronger no. And the third sign of ego is constantly seeking attention. The more you seek attention, stronger is the ego. Next sign is, you get disturbed over every small little thing. That is ego. Once we are aware of this, therefore here the teacher says, aham iti adi he nascha shuddho buddho ajara amaraha. He who doesn't have the sense of I, 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 he, he is shuddha pure and therefore he is immortal and he never becomes old and shanta sama vasa iti matmana shochati and he is always at peace with himself and therefore na shochati he never grieves. Crompton grieves. No, there is one company. Bombay dying, therefore Crompton grieves. So, 
बद्ध वासन अर्थो यो सेवते सुखमेंसु ये सुखाय भवेद आशु वस्तु दुखाय नाचता वेंटेकेट सुभाव ओम पूर्ण मदा पूर्ण मिलम पूर्ण पूर्ण मुदच्छते पूर्णस्य पूर्ण मादाय पूर्ण मेवा वशिष्यते ओम शांति 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 हरि ओम भीम योनमहा हरि ओम